What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are checking out Taylor Swift's Fearless album. I'm super excited to get into this one. I know you guys are too because you've blown me up on Instagram and Twitter, which if you are not already, make sure you're following me up there. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're new here. But we're checking out Taylor Swift's Fearless album. And honestly, looking through the track list right now, there is a decent amount of songs that I have heard before, which I'm excited because every Taylor Swift album so far, with the exception of the main radio hits, that I had heard, I haven't heard any of this stuff on it. When I'm looking at this, either she had a ton of radio hits off of this, or maybe just the song title seemed familiar, but it doesn't matter, it's Taylor, it's gonna be great, I can't wait to get into it. So we're not gonna waste any more time, let's do it right now. First track is called Fearless. Ooh, I love country Taylor. Right there. In this passenger seat, you put your eyes on me. He needs to be paying attention to the road. Although, it'd probably be very difficult with Taylor Swift on the car. Yeah. Country guitar solo. Okay, so that was Fearless, the title of the album and the song. And it's a great introduction to this album so far because I know we're going to get a little bit of that Maybe not a little bit, a lot of it. I'm pretty sure this won a lot of awards. Um, but we're gonna get Country Taylor again, and Country Taylor is so much fun. It's nostalgic for me because obviously when I was in, this was 2008, so I was in high school when this came out. It's probably why I heard so many of these songs. Everyone was playing Taylor Swift back then. Before all the drama, before all of that, it was just fun, nice, country twang, and I was in Texas at the time, so it fits so perfectly. And yeah, again, song's just a great way to introduce that sound, so I'm excited. The next track we're gonna listen to, I have heard before, but I've never really purposely listened to it, so this next track is called 15. Oh, that's so good. I think that song right there can pretty much sum up Taylor Swift in that country era because what I really loved and what I always thought was going to be amazing for her was her songwriting, <clears throat> which even to this day is still true. But back in this country era, when you listen to country music, the songs tell the story, the vocals are very easy to understand, there's not too much um, like metaphor type music um, lyrically. So typically it's very to the point. And Taylor Swift does a, such a great job here of giving us that storytelling very accurately. It makes you feel like you could relate to the song. Like how many people at 15 years old or a little bit older or whatever, when they realize that all the things that happened in the song they've been through before, you're screaming that in a car as you're driving. Like you can't help it because you feel the emotion coming in that chorus. You know Taylor Swift's songwriting is gonna give that to you. It's exactly what you get here. So I love that track. You know what I'm enjoying right now is I've always passively listened to this stuff when it came out because it would be like on the radio or whatever playing in the background. I never purposely listened to it. So the fact that I'm sitting here and actually in front of it purposely trying to take it in, you get a lot more elements of the music. You get more of the instrumentation, more of the storytelling, not just the chorus. And overall, it just makes me appreciate this a little bit more. Okay, next track. Everybody knows this one. This is probably one of the greatest songs of all time ever written ever. The song is called Love Story. And again, if you don't like it, you're canceled. Okay, here we go. Love Story. We were both young when I first saw you. My daddy said, stay away from Oh, that build up. How do you not? Let me get That is Taylor Swift in a nutshell right there. Maybe the second time I've already said that on this album, but perfect storytelling, amazing songwriting. She literally gave us an entire story there of Romeo and Juliet, which obviously was a tragedy, but the way that she presents it in the song is so great. The instruments on this track are amazing. I know I've mentioned this before when we watched a live version of it, but a lot of bands in like the metal scene, pop punk scene, punk scene, things like that, have actually covered this song live before because the instruments are actually pretty heavy for a Taylor Swift song. Um, and I still mean what I said in that if like, I'm very open-minded towards music. Um, like if you were to go through my record collection, 
it's so eclectic that it'd be probably frustrating to a lot of people because I like to listen to so many different genres rather than just only focusing on like pop music or punk music or metal or anything like that. I like to listen to a little bit of everything. And this fits so perfectly amongst that. And I just can't imagine being in a situation where I thought that I was too cool to at least appreciate an album like this. And I love it. I'm actually gonna go search for the record when I'm done with this because we're only three tracks in and it's already just such a banger. Even if it's just for nostalgia purposes, it's so good. I love to hear Taylor in this setting. Okay, the next track, Hey Stefan? Interesting, Hey Stefan. Hmm, because that's definitely not how you spell Steven. Steven has a V in it. Steven, Steven in stereo, Stefan in stereo. This next track is called Hey Stefan. First off, Taylor, I'm flattered. You did spell my name wrong, um, but I will let it slide because you are, in fact, Taylor Swift, so you are able to do that. Uh, but in all seriousness, I love this track. I love that the instrumentation is stripped down. One thing that I've noticed in four songs is that there's a lot of heavy emphasis on the drums in this, which I like because in a song like this, it was very stripped back. There was a little bit of an acoustic guitar in the back. The drum really carried the beat here. But honestly, the best part of this song was Taylor Swift humming the melody of it in the choruses. I feel like that's a very unique thing to do. It's something that you might hear in live performances from people, but you don't often hear it on a recorded studio version that comes out. And I think it really added a lot of like innocence to the track. And because she was being very raw and emotional and honest in the song, singing to me, but not actually me, because I wouldn't have done this to Taylor. She wouldn't have had to assume we were gonna be together. We would have just been together, because why can't you see Taylor, you belong with me. That's called foreshadowing. But um, I like the fact that she was being raw and emotional and honest and the instrumentation wasn't overly produced and heavy to the point that it was drowning out the meaning behind the song. It was just fun, it was playful, and I really liked the way she sounded in it. But again, humming that melody, I think really was the best part of this track. So honestly, for a song sing to me, I give it 100% two thumbs up, because that was perfect. Okay, so now that we're done with Taylor serenading your boy, we're gonna check out the next track, which is called White Horse. I don't know if I've heard this one, but I've definitely heard the song title. Sorry that face of an angel comes out you. I'm really loving the vocals here. Oh man. You know, this track is probably one of my favorites so far. The reason being is, you know, Taylor is a wonderful person and we love to see her happy. You know, we love that for her. But there's something different when she sings an emotional song like this. And, you know, other than the Lover album, all the albums have had this sort of a vibe to it. There's always been that sort of like very real sadness. And um, you can hear it in her voice in this. And that sort of emotion and that sort of like real honest music is what I love most from her. I mean, what do I even need to say right there? That is, that is, again, that is Taylor summed up. I mean, this album to me so far is pretty much all the things I kind of had thought of Taylor, like what I thought of her musically, lyrically, things like that, because a lot of that came from inspiration of hearing these types of songs. But I love the storytelling in this. I love the fact that she literally recorded her vocals with that pain, almost as if, and I've said this before on some of her other tracks that she's done that have been hard hitting like this. Oh, it's track five. Oh. Uh... Uh, it makes a lot more sense now. Okay, it's always track five. I just love that it feels like she she came to the studio with all of that pain because, you know, the verse is a little bit slow and she's really just like putting it out there. But the minute it hits the chorus, her she just sounds broken. I don't know. And then at some point there's a break or like a bridge and there's a violin which totally adds to it. But one thing I do like is that at the end, it's like she figured it out and she was like okay with the fact that it wasn't working out. She was saying no to this person, like, no, this ain't a small town, this is a big world, and I don't have to be stuck like this. And I love the fact that she had that sort of closure at the end of this song. 
everything would have made more sense if I would have realized that this was the track five. This was going to be the emotional one. Um, again, I said it, but I'm pretty sure this is going to be one of my favorites on the album. And the reason being is that I love, I guess I'm always, I'm a track five kind of guy. That's new merch coming soon. Track five. Yeah, I just, I love it. I love, I love the honesty that way. Man, this album is so good. Ugh, underrated. Although I'm sure it won like a billion awards. Okay, the next track I also love. This isn't fair. I don't want to like every song, but damn it, you're making it easy. Next song is You Belong With Me. That riff is so iconic. I mean, the video for that was iconic. The drum beat to that is iconic. The lyrics to that are iconic. The story to this is iconic because everything about Taylor Swift is iconic in this album so far. It's the reason that it did so well. It's the reason that so many people love this album so much. Everybody says that Speak Now is her favorite or Red or Reputation. It's, you know, I mean, the truth of the matter is there's a lot of arguments online about what her best album is. And I think that's hard to even try to justify because there are so many different eras and sounds of her music. Like this sounds nothing like Reputation, nothing does. This has a little bit of a similar sound to Red, but I feel like Red was a little bit heavier and a lot more emotional. Um, Speak Now had like a, a definitely like more of a rock vibe to it. I don't know. I feel like it's hard to even put the, any of them together, but no one can deny that this song is not iconic and that so far the majority of these songs have been iconic. So amazing as always. It's one of those songs you can't help but headbang to. I know that doesn't make any sense to a lot of you, but you just can't help but scream this at the top of your lungs and have a moment. <sighs> I am out of breath from how great that was. Okay, the next track is called Breathe. This is featuring Colby. Oh, I haven't heard her in a really long time. So she's doing this song with Colby Kayet. Colby, Kylet, Colby Kaye, whatever, had that song. And the melody to that sounds exactly like that right there. I don't know if anybody else caught that. That's so cool. Hearing the harmonies of those two together is perfect for this album. Um, I mentioned it a little bit in the song, but there is a striking similarity in that pre-chorus before it drops into the chorus for the song Realize by Colby Kayat and the song Breathe with both of them. And I love that little bit that happened there just because at that time that song was big. I think it's Realize. I think that's what the song was called. I could be wrong, um, but you guys know the song I'm talking about. And I'm glad that because that song was big at that time and they have this collaboration going, that the song doesn't sound like that song, but just that one little brief moment has a similar melody. I'm also glad that Taylor decided to bring back the humming again. We had it in um, Hey Steven, I believe, and I really enjoyed it. I think it added something cool to it. So I was really excited to hear it again in this song, Breathe. And because the vocals were so good and the instrument was so good and the harmonies were so good, I didn't really pay attention to the lyrics all that much. I hate when that happens, but it's the reason I don't read the lyrics anymore as I'm listening to the album is because sometimes um, I miss out a lot. So I didn't quite listen to the lyrics as much as I wish I would have in that one, but it's kind of hard when you have two women that are so great vocally and you're trying to listen to that. But overall, I thought it was really great. Something I'll definitely go back and listen to again because she did say, you know, I can't breathe without you, but I have to. So I definitely want to know what the rest of the story was for that one. Okay, the next track is called Tell Me Why. Hey. I like when we have a little bit more attitude infused Taylor as well on a same album. Um, the instruments are a little bit more upbeat and heavy here. And I love that you can like hear the little bit of maybe not so much anger, but like frustration and irritation in her voice. And so she brings that into the chorus and it just sounds so badass. It's almost like a little bit of like a, like a, like a rock vibe. <laughs> This is like
like the ultimate diss track here. I mean, to actually have Taylor this mad, you you really messed up, man. So my take on this track, it sounds like either she is or or she's either in a relationship or in one of those relationships where like you're not really together but you're together, and. It sounds like the dude is constantly putting her down and everything so that she'll just be with him and he crushes all of her dreams and everything so that she won't leave. She's just stuck with him. Something along those lines. Um, and even though I maybe don't have that concept completely 100%, what I do know is that Taylor is not having it. She is not having it in this track at all. And it's funny because, well, I guess it's not funny, but it's one of those things where you realize like, Taylor picks the emotion for the song and portrays that so well. Some people can't really do that all the time. Um, and I love the fact that if we have a, a sad song, she's sad. If we have um, like a more of like a fun love song, like Love Story or You Belong With Me, it's fun, it's happy, it's chipper. Tell me why, she's pissed. She's pissed, but this isn't reputation pissed. This is a personal attack <laughs> and I love it. I, I just, I love that it has a rock vibe. It has that punk sound to it. And even lyrically, the fact that she's going in on this dude about this relationship is great. It's everything I would expect Taylor Swift to do in this over a rock sound, and I like it. Okay, the next track is called You're Not Sorry. Uh-oh, we got sad vibes here. Hmm. This sounds... Oddly similar to uh, Too Late to Apologize with Timbaland. I think that might be on purpose because this is the second time that she's had a, a throwback. Not a throwback because these songs are popular at this time, but that she's thrown like, like tipped her hat to one of those songs. Let's, let's see how this goes. I think that was done on purpose. Obviously it was. And I'm I'm so here for this because that song is so great anyways. And there's been a lot of great remixes of it. Um, but the fact that it's got that country twang to it, little bit of a rock vibe, and we've got Taylor crushing it on the vocals here. I am 100% here for this. I ship this, this happening right now. Instruments are so good. That song was so good. Just so good. I love what they did with this song here. I love that it's not a direct rip of Too Late to Apologize, but it is inspired by and it's got that country sound to it. I love how she sounds on this album, song, record, the whole fucking thing. But I love how she sounds right here on this track because she's she's letting this person know like, I don't care what we went through. I don't care what we were, where we've been. Don't call me anymore because you cannot apologize for the things that you did. And it actually feels like a direct correlation with the song Tell Me Why. I feel like it's perfect to go right into it because in Tell Me Why we were getting her pretty much laying out, hey, you do all these things to me and, and it sucks for me because now like here I am stuck with you. I have nothing like nothing's going right for me and this relationship doesn't work for me. And then it goes right into you're not sorry as in like, you probably like try to apologize for those things and stuff, but it means nothing to me because I know you don't care. And I just love the passion she brought into this track. So overall, wonderful vibe. I, there's not a song yet that I haven't been feeling. Every one of these songs has had just a little bit of something that makes me want to go back and listen again. In fact, when I edit this video, odds are I'm going to be listening to this in the background because um, I need more of it. I, it's not a one-time listen kind of thing. Okay, the next track is called The Way I Loved You. Perfect storytelling. Again, like, oh, we're gonna talk about the end of this. I gotta get back into this. <sighs> There's too many songs to like on this album. It's like frustrating because sometimes with a Taylor album, 
I've been able to be like, okay, that one's good, but I can't imagine like why I would listen to it again, blah, blah, blah. But here I am with this track, track 10, and it's the way I love it. She's having this moment where she is, she found the perfect guy. He does everything 100% perfect, the way you would expect this guy in the relationship to act. He's friends with your mother, talks business with your father. He opens the door for you, calls on time, he's always there, takes you on dates, all these perfect things. But she is struggling because she remembers the passion she had for her last relationship, the one that she loved, where she's fighting, kissing in the rain, screaming your name, all these things. Um, and all that passion, and that's the kind of love that she remembers. So even though this guy's perfect, she said it's perfectly fine because she misses that sort of passion and being that involved with somebody and, you know, the fights and the fact that he was crazy and all over the place and she was like intoxicated by him. But even though this perfect relationship's right in front of her, that's what she longs for. And I love that because, I mean, how many of us can relate to that? Like we've struggled in that before where you're in a relationship and it's usually one of your first or second relationships that are like really long and they are chaotic at times and a lot of fights and really frustrating. And so you leave those people and you go and you find like the perfect relationship, but you're always longing for like, wow, like I kind of miss that as much as I hated it in the moment. Like I love that I loved that person so much that I was going crazy for them. So again, her storytelling and the fact that she's so great at these lyrics nails it right here. And then if that wasn't enough, the instrumentation in the song is just such a banger. So I love this. Again, I loved it, of course I did. Okay, I think I've heard this song that we're gonna listen to next. It's called Forever and Always. If I remember correctly, I liked it when I first heard it. So let's see if I'm right. Oh yeah, I've heard this. I think it's another great track that we get where she is explaining a relationship here and when you first get into that relationship, it's, oh, I'll be with you forever. We're going to get married one day. Oh, it's going to be so wonderful. It's going to be um, enchanted. It's going to be this wonderland, this fairy tale. And then you get to a point, you know, maybe a year later, maybe a few months later where you're by yourself checking your phone, like she said, you know, you stare at the phone, you still haven't called, and then you start thinking of that time, like, man, do you remember when he said forever and always, and like, here we are now, and that's not the situation? And it's just amazing how accurate she portrays this. And she was pretty young then, I think like 18 or 19 when she wrote this album, but her understanding of relationships at that point was already so great. Now I get that she probably had co-writers to put this together, but when you know it's Taylor Swift, you already know that she has the majority of the say in that song anyways. And you can tell, I mean, the albums that she's written now all still have the same sort of storytelling vibe. So you can tell when she, when she is the one who put the input and wrote the song. And I think that her understanding is great. And the fact that she can put it into a song as good as this, something that's memorable. I haven't heard the song since it probably came out. And I can still remember some of the lines to it because it's just so catchy. So overall, again, another great song from Taylor Swift because I just can't seem to find anything wrong with this Fearless album. Okay, the next track we're gonna listen to is a song called The Best Day. It's got a very upbeat vibe to it, I like it. I love this. It's very reminiscent of another Taylor song. I can't think of the name of it right off the top of my head where she was singing as if she was talking to herself as a kid again, treating her mother with respect and, and her parents and her family. I can't quite remember what it was, but it's like, hey, take it easy on, I don't remember. Yeah, I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, I definitely feel those same vibes on this. And I like it. I like the fact that she dedicated a song to her family. And I like that you can feel the 
it's like kind of chipper and happy and she made sure the instrumentation matched that and it sounds very cool to just hear her going through these different ages where she had memories with her family and I thought it was a really beautiful moment on this. Very different from the rest of the album because it's not about personal relationships with significant others and things like that. The song is about her family and different memories she had with them and I think it's a really cool addition. It's a little bit slower of a song but I do like the overall meaning behind it and I think lyrically is really where the song shines. Okay. The next track and the last track is going to be the song called Change. Okay, starts off heavy. Man, I just, for some reason, the intro track Fearless and the last track Change on just the standard edition of this, for some reason, that was like a perfect ending to this album. Um, as far as vocals, lyrics, instrumentation, you know, it left you with a feeling of hope. It didn't feel like it just left abruptly. I feel like I actually got a real fade out out of that. Also, shout out to um, the Haley Williams inspiration that I was definitely feeling in that track. I know that the two of them are friends and I could hear a lot of Haley Williams in Taylor Swift's vocals on that track in particular, which I'm actually a huge fan of. I'm glad that she did that because that sounds really cool and I like when she does that. The chorus in the song, she had some really powerful, strong vocals at some points and I don't know, it was very reminiscent of like just, just some Paramore rock and I'm down with that. So that was the Fearless album. I am very stoked that I finally got to check it out with you guys and my thoughts on the album are extremely positive. I didn't realize just how great of a piece of work this actually was. Passively listening to it back when I was in high school, um, just with tracks that were on the radio, never quite gave it the credit that I think it deserved. Um, to actually realize that I never picked up on her amazing songwriting, her beautiful, very unique vocals. I love the country twang from her. The pretty heavy songs, like we got some pretty good like rock songs here. And I love the fact that there's some really deep tracks like White Horse, Tell Me Why, You're Not Sorry, The Way I Loved You, like even though they were a little bit more upbeat, they were still deep. They had a lot of good meaning to them. And if I had one critique of this entire album, I would say that at some point, these songs became very um, predictable. They were following a very similar pattern. So you would always get the verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, outro. And while that's not really a negative thing, that's a lot of music these days, um, on this album in particular, I felt like I was really picking that up with every song. I kind of knew what was going to come next. And I don't know if I've really ever felt that way in a Taylor Swift album before, so that definitely stands out as this. I will say, though, that because this was marketed towards more of the country market, a lot of country music follows that exact same routine. So while it is a critique, I can't quite knock the album for that because that is sort of what that genre is known for. But I just love the songwriting overall. If I had to pick my favorite thing about this entire album, it's got to be the songwriting. I love the storytelling. I love feeling like in White Horse, like my heart was being broken just with hers. And then when she had that uplifting moment at the end, I felt that too. The Way I Loved You is so relatable on so many levels and I know you guys like it. And of course, I know she spelt my name wrong, but she did sing a song to me. She was humming the melody to it. So I was falling in love every single moment of that. And I just have to say that I would give this album an A++++, 10 out of 10. This is a perfect record. Usually, and you guys know this on my channel, I'm very honest, if there's something about a Taylor Swift album that I don't like, I will say it. I will say if there's a song that I wasn't really feeling and every single song on this was perfect. This was perfection. This is why her career skyrocketed the way that it did. Because at this time, she was nailing what was popular and she did it with ease and I love that. I have enjoyed checking out Taylor Swift's album so much on my channel. I have one more to do. That is the self-titled. And as much as like I don't want to just do it and get it out of the way, because I like, I don't know, like I want to listen to this a few more times. I know that you guys really want, I know that you guys really want me to just check out the final album and have her discography finished. And so I know I need to jump in and just do that ASAP. So if you guys are interested in that and you liked this video, please, it really does help the channel out if you guys smash the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you have not already. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Links are down below. You can ask my followers. I'm very active over there. I try to message as many of you guys as possible. So if you want to hang out, make sure to check the links in the description. Also, we have merch. Make sure to check the merch. It's um, usually advertised somewhere down here at the bottom. So make sure to check that out. Thank you guys so much for spending your afternoon with me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.